Hello and welcome back to Nomad Overland. My name is Ben. Thank you so much for, be for being here today. We are going to be looking at the top 10 considerations or strategies to make sure that you have adequate shelter protection when you are camping or overlanding. So let's get going. Number one, make sure you choose a high quality tent. Now, whether this is a rooftop tent or a ground tent, doesn't matter. You want to be looking at a few things. Number one, make sure the tent has water resistant materials that it is made from. And these are high quality waterproof material, not waterproof, but water resistant materials. Also be looking for things like reinforced seams, strong zippers, and robust strong tent poles. I would also be looking at most likely 99% of the time changing out the tent stakes if you are uh, owning a ground tent, okay? The reason is the ground stakes that come with the tent are most often not strong enough. They're made lightweight, yes, but generally not strong enough and generally not long enough. You want to have a tent stake, in my opinion, at least 12 inches long and made of steel, not aluminum. Now, if you are going out in the, your vehicle, obviously the extra weight is not an issue. So replace the tent poles, uh, tent stakes rather. That's uh, my personal recommendation because yeah, I've, I've been in that situation. So definitely worthwhile to pay attention to. Number two, um, check the waterproof rating of the material in the tent. Now, this is especially true for your fly and your ground sheet, those two items in particular. You wanna look for a hydrostatic rating of 3000 millimeters plus. That's a lot of technical stuff there. I'm not gonna explain that right now, but if you do want to know, put a comment in the, in the uh, put a, let me try that again. Put a question in the comment section and I will respond to you. There we go. That was convoluted, but it's okay. Um, the reason is that the, uh, the higher the higher hydrostatic rating, the better water resistance the material will have. Okay, that's the, that's the, the simple version of that. I can provide you with a more detailed explanation of that uh, either in a future video or in the comment section. Number three, number three, um, might seem obvious, but make sure that the campsite you are choosing is appropriate. There are a couple of things that you want to do and a couple of things that you definitely do not want to do. So number one, the thing that you can do um, is look for natural protections, uh, trees, uh, a rock face, etc., that might be able to block some of the wind and the rain or other uh, negative elements that you're in. But also make sure that you are not putting your ground tent, especially in an area that has shallowness to it, like there's a little bit of a dip or uh, a depression or a low-lying area, um, this can be especially damaging uh, because you're gonna wake up wet in the morning because your, your, your tent has flooded because all of the rain has drained into that low-lying area. So you wanna, be, you wanna be elevated enough that the water will not uh, pool around you, okay? Good. Number four, use a ground sheet. Um, most tents will come with a ground sheet. This is something that goes underneath the floor of your tent and provides additional waterproofing or water resistance under the tent. Um, and it can help with, uh, with sharper objects, maybe that you've missed when you're clearing out the area. Um, but it does provide a little bit of extra, uh, a, a little bit of extra 
resistance for water as also for objects. Okay, so there's another thing for you. Um, number five, reinforce. I kind of already talked about this, but again, it's all about reinforcement of the material. Number five, number five, reinforce your guy lines and your stakes. So you're going to want to properly stake out the tent uh, and that firmly affixes it to the ground, right? If you do have a windstorm coming up, uh, even though you're in the tent, you want the tent to be secure. Um, also make sure that your guy lines are nice and tight and the guy lines are staked out properly as well. So my, my standard that I have for myself is a tent that has, let's say, six to eight staking points around the base of the tent will probably have six to eight guy line points as well. That means you want to have at least 16 tent stakes with you. I always bring more just in case. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, at least 12 inches long. Um, okay. Uh, also with the guy lines, you want to make sure that you have the sliders that will allow you to uh, pull the guy line tighter uh, to pull the tent out and really give a good uh, sturdy uh, envelope around you. Okay, that includes the tent, but also the fly as well. Okay, number six, number six, um, bring extra tarps with you. So having an extra tarp can be a really, really helpful, although depending on where you are, maybe not necessary, but could be helpful because even though your tent has that wonderfully 3000 plus millimeter rating for uh, water resistance, having the extra cover over your tent is just, again, another layer of weather protection for your sleeping, okay? Now, this can be helpful for wind, it can be helpful for rain, it can be helpful for the sun. Now, a tarp is generally less expensive than the tent, and as tents are in the sun longer and longer throughout the season, um, a lot of tents will have UV protection, but that UV protection can kind of fall away over the years. So having that extra tent does give an extra little protection for the tent itself in terms of UV rating. Uh, okay, number seven, number seven, ventilation. Make sure your tent has good ventilation. This reduces condensation on the inside of the tent when you are sleeping. You are expelling uh, CO2, uh, where does that go? If your tent is sealed up, it stays in the tent and you'll wake up with those condensation beads uh, on your, uh, on, on the tent on the inside and maybe dripping on you, etc. depending on how many people are in the tent. So this is important for both warm weather and cold weather, okay? Both, both temperatures. And you want to have something uh, you want to have something front and back, you want to have something side to side, but also on the top of the tent. That releases the CO2 out of the top of the tent to reduce the internal condensation. Make sense, I hope? Okay, number eight, number eight, regularly inspect your tent. Regularly inspect your tent. Before you go off on each trip, you want to Make sure that all of the material itself is okay. There's no rips or tears. Um, this is especially true around areas where you might have uh, you might have an area that the tent guy line is attached to. Now they've probably done double, triple stitching around those areas, but make sure that none of, the th none of that threading is starting to pull away from the tent wall itself, okay? Um, look for areas where there are tears or maybe where a potential tear is starting. If that's the case, 
that area has become weaker. Uh, so you want to uh, fasten that up as best you can. If your tent is under warranty, maybe send the tent back in for repair uh, to get that done through the company. Um, also, uh, bro uh, zippers, check to make sure the zippers are working well and they're, they're going up and down uh, without having any areas that are stuck. If that's the case, you might want to think about getting a zipper wax and just waxing the zipper to make that smooth again, okay? It, it's, zipper wax is not that expensive, but it can actually uh, help you creating, uh, creating a, a snag in, in the zipper. Um, okay, if you do find that you have issues with your tent, like I said, send them off for warranty service uh, and you may or may not want to have a second tent for backup. It's possible, but it could be something to consider. Um, number nine, number nine, um, make sure that you are using weather appropriate gear. So, you know, you want to make sure, depending on the season, that the gear you are using for your tent or for your physical body uh, is weather appropriate. So, uh, things inside the tent, like a tent heater perhaps, uh, not always necessary, but it could be something that you might want to invest in. Um, insulated sleeping sleeping bags. These are uh, not sleeping bags, sleeping pads, I should say. Um, pads are rated from one to nine in terms of the level of insulation that will, um, that will keep the cold down in the ground and not being absorbed into your body. It's really interesting how all of this works. I think it's called thermal conduction. I could be wrong on that, but basically if you're warm and the ground is cold, your body is going to, the, 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 the ground is going to feel that heat and pull the heat out of your body to heat the ground up. You don't want that to happen. So you will be, you'll want to look for a thermal pad of rated eight or nine would be appropriate. That will cover all seasons. This is true even in the summertime. It could be 30 degrees outside, but at nighttime the, the, the temperature is going to drop and your body heat is going to be sucked into the ground. So have a, a, a thermal rating that is high enough to cover all of your camping or outdoor needs throughout the entire season. That way you won't have to buy more than one. Okay, just a little tip there for you. Um, okay, number 10, number 10. Uh, practice setting up your tent before you go out. Um, familiarization, practice makes perfect, right? So set your tent up properly, correctly, make sure you're following the instructions that are given by the manufacturer and practice at home. And this will ensure that once you get out into the wilderness, you might have to set your tent up in adverse conditions. How are you going to do that? Well, uh, let's say it's raining a little bit. Don't set up the tent first. Little tip. Don't set up your tent first. Set your tarp up first. Then build your tent underneath the tarp. This will ensure that the tent stays mostly dry when you are setting it up, okay? Just a little nomad overland tip for those tent dwellers as opposed to uh, rooftop tents. Uh, rooftop tents, uh, similar of course, uh, practice setting up. Uh, you know, you've got a ladder attached. How do you attach the ladder? Um, is it attached directly to the tent? Is it something that you have to attach to a line and then screw in? There's all sorts of different variations. Those are things that you're going to want to uh, deal with for sure. Okay, that's it for the top 10 tent tips to help you have a restful sleep. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great time. See you in the next 10. Peace.